Hello, my astrology friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com and everyone's been writing to me, come on, where is Trifon? We want to hear about the comments. We want to hear about the eclipse. People are on fire. They want to hear what Trifon has to say. And he's here. He's a serial astrologer, as you know, incredible. Last time we spoke, he said big secrets and darkness, sexual darkness, uh, all the sexual issues that have people have been doing will come to the surface and we're in the middle of a big big <laughs> uh p daddy uh scandal that's involving most of hollywood so he was right on because there was an eclipse on another oh, south note of karma like trifon said was on the star zania which is star of sexual <laughs> and misbehaving, misbehaving. yes yes definitely very dark side to it as we can see and before we start, I want to say that Trifon is finally making a course. I'm extremely excited about that on November the 12th, the 11th and 12th, or 12th and 13th, Saturday and Sunday. It's a weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, 12th and 13th of November. Yes, do come and join us. For those of you who order in the next 10 days, it's going to be only $125. For later ones, $150, 12-hour webinar Trifon said it can be sold for thousands of dollars, but we made it a very affordable. It's about love and marriage. Can you tell us a little bit more what it includes? Yes, this will be a seminar on love and marriage. Uh, it is based, of course, on my experience and the writings of the ancients on the matter. So it uh, includes the following uh, points, like in general on marriage, also... It will include knowledge about the number of the partners in one's life, including in marriage. Also, the timing of marriage, when the marriage takes place, techniques about prediction, about that. Uh, then also the, the topic of the harmony of marriage will be uh, discussed, which is very important. In addition, I have, because those things, they are discussed by all the ancient authors, uh, also, however, I'm including additional things like suitability for creating children. Sometimes I have noticed this is like a very important topic. And uh, people can be not so suitable to create children and to have difficulties for that and so on. Also, then this will be included with uh, the topic of the timing of when the children are coming in one's life. So... Uh, again, the following is the morality of the partners, whether there will be cheating, affairs, etc. Right? Who is that, that's very... how to see yeah. how to see if in the horoscope of a potential partner that he will be probably not doing well in this regard, so to say, like uh, prone to have affairs, etc. And also knowledge about how to see the the loyalty in the person who is really devoted. Uh, this in, in, includes uh, various astrological techniques about it. And finally, some things that I have already talked about uh, in previous seminars, but uh, I have like widened the knowledge about that. So this is about the lots of love. This is specific places in the chart that are indicating uh, the quality of the topic. There are like additional specific uh, knowledge about that and also about the stars of love and we can say also the stars of sexuality which is a little different <laughs> uh, but still still related and so the the knowledge of all those topics will be there on uh, 12th and 13th of november online this webinar about love and marriage and if people can attend it live they can they will receive the recordings on them for live so I'm very excited because there are a lot of things I want to learn from you, Trifon. And also, if anyone wants to contact Trifon for a personal reading now, he's offering his 60-minute reading for a discount and his money and wealth reading, which covers your finances for years ahead with ancient methods. Uh, they are on discount for all our viewers, putting a link below. Yeah, the reason for the financial reading offer is that Jupiter in Taurus, the sign of finances, is now making his uh, retrograde turn this month, like literally in days, like in five days on the 8th of October, Jupiter is about to turn in Taurus, sign of finances. And like literally minutes ago, I was reading an ancient text that was stating that uh, 
a planet that becomes retrograde is an indication of ruin, delay, and in general, uh, it's a bad sign for whatever will be happening there. And I, I'm reminding you that Taurus is the sign of finances, but Jupiter related to Taurus, of course, we talk about the sidereal Taurus, right? But sidereal Taurus is a sign that is visible for your naked eyes. You can go uh, at night with your uh, Star Watch applications on your uh, smartphones, and you can see how Jupiter is uh, in, in the head of the Taurus constellation right now. So when he turns uh, in a few days, Actually, even the, the the station of his becoming retrograde is starting because it is uh, told that seven days before the actual turning, uh, this process is already prominent. And uh, it can be said that this, this situation of Jupiter is already ru ruling the times, starting with the first two days ago, the first of power. And so Jupiter is turning in Taurus, indicating... Uh, uh, potentially what has been said in the ancient clay tablets of Mesopotamia, that when Jupiter is in Taurus, there will be destruction of cattle, and that the treasury of the kingdom will empty. And now uh, we know that there is there was like great disaster striking in USA, for example, a country that has uh, its rising sign uh, being Taurus. So it literally plays by the book, because I already hear that the expenditure, uh, the losses that the Hurricane Helene uh, inflicted will be past $150 billion, okay, which is oh, wow. really big, even for USA and, for, of course, for any major power, not to talk about small countries. And this is one side only of Jupiter. Uh, indicating this. So, in other words, the ruler of the eighth house, counting for Taurus, imagine Taurus is the ascendant, the rising sign. When we then we count eight signs and we arrive at Sagittarius being the eighth sign for Taurus. Jupiter is the, ru the ruler. So, this is to say that for USA, the ruler of the eighth house right now is making this uh, negative, destructive uh, turning. Uh, which has impact on wealth. Surely it has impact on politics as well. And uh, the major impact is still coming. 8th of October is the actual turning of Jupiter. Uh, if you remember, uh, there was a successful prediction about uh, disasters and problems uh, coming for, uh, from oceans and waters due to the lunar eclipse in the middle of September being in uh, Pisces, a water sign related to oceans. And uh, also due to the presence of Saturn in those degrees in Aquarius, which are uh, the stars there represent the water that is falling from the pot of Aquarius. And uh, Saturn is now there, which is very specific time. Uh, water disasters are happening and they can still, I am reminding to everyone that they can still continue to happen until around the end of November, Saturn is still in these positions. Even they can become uh, maybe even stronger in some parts of the world as Saturn will make station in November, but we'll talk more about it. So this warning stays still. Uh, 100 days is the effect of the eclipse that happened in Pisces. Nepal was also devastated by floods of the same Yeah, time. Nepal, Europe also had big floods. Uh, also, uh, great disasters happened, I think, in New Delhi, in India. And so on. So uh, this is like widespread for the world, definitely. And it still continues. Uh, and it started when Saturn entered those degrees together with Mars in April, and then the most unexpected of places, uh, Dubai, suffered immensely from flood uh, in April, if you remember. Saturn at Mars made it like double strength of the disaster at the time. And uh, the ancients are uh, writing that Aquarius, well, conjunction happened in April. <coughs> if, of course, they say it's uh, 
uh, one of the two signs representing Arabian countries, the other being Scorpio, by the way. Uh, and so, uh, these things came to pass. Also, this prediction that you mentioned, that it, it came true, about uh, the South Node aligning with the star Zania, uh, star representing, um, obviously, obviously, uh, things related to sexuality going into excess somehow, and in thus relating this star also to the activity of uh, sexual traffic and uh, uh, prostitution, etc. And uh, the South Node continues to be aligned with the star. It will, it, it, it is just the beginning. It's just actually the beginning and it will be very active actually for the next three months with uh, specific uh, even greater uh, accents on those topics. So, so now the puff that decays and also there is a greater activity in uh, pursuing uh, criminals uh, related to this uh, uh, business, so to say, sex traffic, the criminal underworld. So uh, the South Node, however, indicates punishment because the South Node, uh, for example, in ancient India, they consider the South Node to represent karma that is ready to be uh, right. And that also even represents exit of this world. So karma in many ways. And uh, that's why uh, people who are involved here in that way, uh, of course, only them, right? Because this is karma. Mm -hmm. It will not affect anyone who is not involved somehow or, or have not done bad things. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, however, the South Node brings punishment, karmic what, punishment. What about for the ones that were the victims? South Node for them means closure or... Uh... That they not notice, uh, his meaning is uh, releasing freedom from uh, suffering in whatever way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's actually a release for them. This is what I believe it is, and so this is uh, about the topics, uh, of course. Not only Jupiter is there uh, making this important movement happening very soon. Um, by the condition of Jupiter, we can judge that uh, things that were okay will go, will slow down. And the good karma, so to say, for the world and people will slow down. Uh, in my opinion, always when Jupiter is retrograde, which will be for a couple of months, this is basically when Sorry to say, people, that uh, you may say again, Trifon is depressing or something, but uh, Jupiter being retrograde means that the, the goodness in this world is not so effective. The good karma is not so much present. Uh, as in the other times when Jupiter is direct, it's quite logical. Jupiter, however, being retrograde invites everyone to uh, to look into himself and in the surrounding matters and people and to search to reestablish the good things that has been lost or the work that has not been done in order to establish morality, honesty, and principles in uh, one's own life and society. Right. So... After all, you can see that actually even this movement of Jupiter will be positive if we have bravery to take a deeper look at problems. Uh, and so, uh, as for the example of USA, with uh, um, great part of the infrastructure being destroyed, but also this is uh, infrastructure that was like old, not being so well built, etc. So, uh, Jupiter uh, going back will actually make everyone uh, to go back to resolve the unresolved issues from the past. This will involve, in this case, a lot of finances, a lot of investing, and the journey, the emptying of the treasury, and so on. So, 
every issue has two sides. Now, also, this is the last month of the retrogradation of Saturn. The month of October, because next month Saturn will uh, become direct. Now, when Saturn is in the last uh, the last times of his retrogradation, things can become like more heavy with greater pressure. Right? This is a time to for people to persevere in their efforts. Of course, Saturn indicates uh, again the need of uh, going back to unresolved issues, especially in the material world. Is the same topic, uh, and so some moments will follow that uh, both Jupiter and Saturn will, will be retrograde for some time, following the eighth of October. Um, even in the world of politics, this means that uh, everyone will have to go back to things from the past, I guess, and then resolve issues from the past. So I'm giving some hints here. Uh, but uh, the actual prediction about uh, the elections, for example, in USA, I will do right before the elections in the next video. As I did the last time intentionally, of course, not to uh, give uh, great influence on voters to decide uh, on, for themselves according to principles, not to according to someone's opinion or what will happen. And to give also opportunity for everyone to give his opinion freely, not being influenced by others. So, first you guessed correctly the previous two winners. <laughs> Let's see if you'll be three times lucky. <laughs> well, this is not luck, believe me. So, this is very exact uh, research mm. about the astrological cycles of the candidates and the planets related both to parties and to the personal horoscopes of the candidates. Uh, I will, so far, I'll say that it's really, really complex. I took a look, it's really complex to make a decision who, who will win, which means by itself even that uh, the competition will be really, really complex. Really complex and really difficult for each of the candidates. Yeah, tell, tell me what you told me before, tell people what you told me before we started. The video about Mercury going <laughs> for 60 days in Scorpio. Yeah, in the end of October is beginning a 65 days transit of Mercury in the sidereal sign of Scorpio, the sign of politics. And uh, Mercury can be like more malefic, being in a malefic sign like Scorpio, which is ruled by Mars. Surely it indicates danger of uh, some. Uh, Bad talking, manipulation, and even lies in politics. True. And uh, this is the very epitome position of uh, political uh, place as Mercury being in Scorpio. When we took a look at Scorpio rising, like each morning we will have this position for 65 days. Like in the morning, Scorpio rises, Mercury rises with it. And then we see that Gemini is the eighth house. So Mercury rises always as the ruler of the eighth house, the house of politics, crisis, transformation. Shock. And, uh, what, dirty, dirty. Whatever, deep change, uh, whatever deep changes are needed, but also it can be the eighth house, you know. It's a sign of crisis, sometimes sign of danger. So it's a really complex position. And... Uh, Mercury later will become even more challenging. It will be initially invisible, but uh, in December, he will turn visible and retrograde. So he will make a lot of mo movements with a lot of meanings. We will discuss this in the coming times. Uh, of course, this indicates that uh, this is like probably the last relatively balanced and uh, soft time for people ruled by Mercury uh, before November and December and beginning of January to change the situation. I remind you, people ruled by Mercury, first by professions, these are people related to trade, to intellectual activity, like journalists, writers, etc. Uh, teachers, of course, and uh, these are the class of people. <laughs> yeah, also Mercury rules the, you can say, the working class. Mercury rules uh, sign with human shape. Gemini represents people. 
Being in Scorpio shows the greater involvement of all people into politics and uh, political struggle of some sort. Can you tell me why is Scorpio the sign of politics? I've never heard that. Is that ancient? Uh, there are some uh, simple reasons for this. For example, Scorpio represents uh, the shared resources oh. of everyone. So in this way, he represents how we interact with the world and with others. So it represents the resources of others, whether they are like uh, their opinion and support or their finances. Uh, so in this way, uh, showing this great interaction and the support and the trust. So basically the main things of uh, Scorpio are trust and mutual support because of this uh, deep interaction with the world that it signifies. That's why it's the sign of uh, transformation and evolution, but also it can be of degradation, manipulation and using others. This is the negative side. So there is a strong good side without the good side of Scorpio, everyone will perish and, and be poor. Like insurance, for example. You know, basically, insurance symbolized by Scorpio signifies uh, help uh, given by the resources of others in a specific way. When it is uh, when it is uh, like uh, used in the good way, which is, by the way, very important right now because there is a great great cost of insurance is going on with all those disasters. And Mercury in Scorpio shows the possibility of big plays and manipulations with this topic, as Mercury can be. Potentially such planet when he is posited in a malefic sign like Scorpio. Sorry to say, people, watch out. Uh, and so, nothing unexpected, I guess. Uh, and that's why, because Scorpio signifies uh, the all connectedness with others, uh, all the help that you can receive, or the fatal lack of any support, for example. Both things can be very political. Uh, this is part of the reason. But that's why most in November it. and December, you're saying? Yes. In the very end of October, he enters. Scorpio, like five days before the USA uh, presidential elections and stays until like 5th of January. There will be some underhanded okay. playing. <laughs> some dirty... Yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. The, the, uh, Mercury also is the planet of negotiation. So intelligence and the ability to, to calm down things, to balance things, will be absolutely decisive in the political processes. Uh, also, on the, the, of course, Scorpio, what, what they will agree on shared resources, how to use taxes, how to uh, direct things in politics. Mm -hmm. So Mercury, however, Mercury indicates the possibility of manipulations going on, uh, which is the dangerous moment. And at the moment, Jupiter will be opposing Mercury and uh, there will be a moment, surely, when Mercury will reach this opposition with Jupiter, which will happen uh, later, like later in December, beginning of uh, January in this time. So whatever manipulations may take place, all being involved must understand that this time they will become obvious. Jupiter will show the truth. So if there is any uh, attempts uh, it will, uh, of manipulation and lies, they will go under, like, the eye of the truth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, for, because of this, there can be scandals, like, right? big scandals. Uh, and so, however, right now, Mercury is in the greatest shape possible. Mercury is in Virgo. And uh, a little later in the month, Mercury will be in Libra, so this month Mercury is beneficial. Okay. So far. Yeah. Yeah, before he goes into Scorpio, he will be around 20 days into Libra, which is sign of diplomacy, which is sign of agreement, 
and it gives a chance and gives a chance for making just decisions and very well measured decisions for everyone. But five days before the election, the situation changes. Watch out. Uh, however, there are so many events this month. We haven't even started with this month. We just covered Jupiter turning retrograde. <laughs> and some things for Mercury, yes. So, however, uh, this month is remarkable for two reasons. There, is, there was already a solar eclipse that happened. But the more important things, and I will begin with it, is the potential of a bright comet uh, rising in the evening skies. And this can happen only in 10 days, 9, 10 days. Like, uh, the calculations are showing that the comet will be more visible uh, and potentially brighter uh, around 12th of October. So we talk about the, the comet commonly known as uh, Atlas. Otherwise, the name of the Chinese discoverer of the comet is complex to pronounce, Su Xing Shan or something like that. And uh, so at last, so in a video that I made for uh, Bulgaria, my home country, uh, like five, six days ago, the, the comet was just turning around the sun. And I would repeat the predictions that I made at that time. So uh, the comet potentially will appear either in Leo or in Virgo, with the greater chance being Leo. Uh, the ancient texts uh, are warning for a comet appearing in Leo that it signifies intensifying of, of wars. And they say that even someone in Babylon, which is to say modern day Iran, Iraq area, will be not sure of his position and uh, state. And basically, if the comet uh, brightens in 10 days, it will signify a much bigger war taking place in the Near East, which is the, the fear right now. It's constantly on the news. So the probability for this to happen is much greater. So just watch. It's already happening because when the comet was with the sun five days ago, actually those things intensified. The sun represents the major powers, the, the politicians, the rulers, and the comet, of course, uh, this big fire in the sky uh, fires their souls and for uh, action. And uh, yeah, of course, also in the Bible, it is ri uh, written that uh, the comets are and the stars they are for signs. So, so if it brightens, uh, it's chance, a sign. Is there a chance it might not become too bright or visible? There are chances. There are chances, but the but actually the chance the chances of becoming uh, well visible are increasing all the time now. Um, the fear was that the comet can disintegrate uh, while being very close to the sun, but this did, did not happen. And so now the expectations are that uh, potentially she will be like the a great celestial event in the eyes of people, but actually in all the uh, ancient minds, uh, a comet to appear was a sign of uh, great disasters. So now let's uh, discuss how great a disaster can this comet represent. So the last great, uh, the last like bright comet that happened, like really bright, was uh, the comet uh, Hale-Bopp in 1997. And uh, the observers, uh, scientists, astronomers, etc., so are expecting potentially to have similar in brightness event. So if this happens, why is it so big? This is such a big comet. It can become. It can become, yes. What it can it have mean? a very what long tail, maybe. What is it? So, mean? Uh, 1997 was uh, called Hell Bob. No, no, the current one. What is the it? The current is called Atlas or Tsushin Shan. Okay. As a number, also. Uh, but it's all on the news right now, so you can easily find more information about it. 
Uh, so, okay, so the comparison with the past. So it it is not, however, expected to be any anything uh, so big as, for example, the Pele uh, comet, which is the greatest comet event of a century, always one two times in a century, and uh, and really the Halley comet uh, is uh, always showing some great work, but uh, this one, if it brightens, it shows again an important work, but not so great. Like with the example of 1997, when the Hale uh, comet started uh, uh, and appeared. What followed was uh, uh, big wars on the Balkans. Still, however, they were regional, regional wars, okay? Uh, because many people fear like third world war, right? WW3. This comet is not it, okay? If it brightens. It is, however, showing potentially if it brightens, it will show big conflicts probably in the Near East, but not something more than this, okay? Thank you for that <laughs> piece of mind. Yes, I it's think you need to know that. East, yeah. It's Babylon, Leo, Babylon area. Yeah, yeah. However, in, in the years ahead, I may have different opinion. I'm warning you people, but not now. What do you mean? I will, I will stop here. And, uh, and this is world. clear enough, actually. So, <laughs> continuing to head ladder. Okay. This was just a glimpse in the future. Uh, so, right now, however, it's not uh, it's not uh, something more than this. Uh, or at least this is my opinion, right? So, uh, the comet is coming. It will go higher and higher in the next days until it becomes visible around between 9th and 12th of October, probably on the 12th. In the evening, looking at the west, this is what is expected. Um, in Leo, you already know what it means. Also, it shows danger for leaders, etc. Last, by the way, last month, I also... Uh, predicted some, if you remember, I predicted some uh, big challenging events for China, like the ancient texts were saying, like big loss. Uh, it was very interesting for me to observe that first their soccer team uh, was defeated 7-0 uh, to by, I think, Japan. For them, hostile political alienation. Then they had uh, great economic troubles, and then they had great natural disasters. Like, and this happened very soon. Uh, so I imagine that if they were involved in any military conflict at the time, this would have been disastrous as well. So it, it holds uh, some true, actually, on the ancient text, definitely. Also, there was a prediction about an important leader uh, being in danger in the positions of the last month. And we saw that uh, what happened to the leader of uh, the organization called Hamas in Lebanon a couple of days ago. So this prediction actually also became true, showing that this leader was actually a really important person. Uh, and so, of course, for everything, there are reasons for everything that is happening, if it is indicated by the Hamas. And, uh, opinion and observation and texts by the ancients. Uh, now, if the comet, uh, because she's expected to go through Leo and she's even already actually there, right now, the comet, the comet is near to the uh, brightest star there is in Leo, uh, called Regulus, the little king. Uh, which can, of course, mean that uh, people with uh, immense power in their countries, including in the Near East, are probably angry right now and uh, intending 
show uh, uh, their their uh, power. This is also dangerous for such leaders. Uh, the comment being too regulous. So again, still the prediction holds true for travel uh, coming to leaders, and I will also uh, make a mention that. Uh, for example, the former U.S. President Donald Trump has uh, this star on his ascendant. Uh, and uh, there is still a warning that is probably also, I think it is valid for him, that he should be really careful. Uh, partly because of this comet and its meanings, but also because uh, it will, Uranus will go in similar position as it, he was in July. What I mean, on the 15th of October, Uranus will make again conjunction with the demon star called Algol. Algol, translated from Arabic, means evil spirit. It's the base of the word uh, alcohol. And uh, why Uranus can indicate uh, some dangers for leaders in USA, it is because, um, this is my like line of thought, of course, uh, it is because, uh, having in mind that Taurus is the rising sign of USA, 10th sign, which indicates leadership and rulership, is Aquarius, and Uranus can be accepted as the modern ruler of Aquarius. And uh, the, the demon star is, of course, star uh, thousands of years associated with destruction. And uh, literally, they say with, when Mars is with this uh, star, which was the case in July, but now it will be not the case. So it's not so dangerous as in July. So they are saying that uh, when Mars, the ancient text is with this star, it is danger that this person, they say, will lose his head. If anyone is born with Mars with the star, he is in danger. Have various troubles with his head. Persons should be careful. But in this case, Uranus with uh, the star Algo can show danger of disturbances, like greater disturbances, or even dangers for uh, leaders of the country of USA. Of course, also for other countries who have uh, strong powers. Um, this is also a valid assumption for them and those countries, uh, according to the knowledge, because I don't know, of course, all the countries, not all countries are known by their horoscopes very well, but countries associated with uh, Taurus, in addition to uh, USA, are Iran, according to the ancients, Cyprus, and it's very logical also to put in this list Switzerland. Also, I know that the horoscope that is known of uh, one of the South American countries is uh, containing the sun in Taurus, opposed by Saturn in Scorpio in the NATO chart, which is very much well reflected right now in the, in the events happening in this country. And this is Argentina, Argentine. So we talk also about this place. All those countries are related to the sign. Uh, of course, Taurus, Taurus signifies um, in general the elite of the financial financial world. Uh, in this way, Uranus with Algo, which is pretty much uh, a star of finances as well, also indicates potentially important financial events, as well as the turning retrograde of Jupiter in the same financial sign happening on the 8th of October. So we have only one week between the two events, 8th October, 15th of October. Uh, and so both of them can be influential in the financial world. And it looks that this can be uh, having various effects, some of them not felt uh, so positively. But I'm reminding you, uh, that even if it indicates troubles on events on the market, uh, those two positions are actually working for uh, the progress of the world. As both Jupiter and Uranus. Jupiter represents truth and Uranus represents freedom. 
whatever they touch, whatever they do, is with the intention of bringing more true and more freedom. This world, in this case, this can be related to the financial world. And so, fans of crypto activity, beware, this month is interesting. And now I will say uh, for the reasons for this, because there is another important transition this month that is about to happen. It is relating to all the people who are ruled by Mars. Now we know that people who are ruled by Uranus, like Aquarius rising in Sidereal, but usually Pisces in tropical size. And also people ruled by Taurus, which is usually considered Gemini in Western astrology. Uh, they can have like important and critical events due to the movements of Jupiter and Uranus. But now we add to the list all those ruled by Mars, Scorpio rising and Aries rising in sidereal size. In Western astrology, 90% of the cases, people think that they have the rising sign Sagittarius or Taurus in this case, because of the projection difference in both systems. So uh, what is going on to happen is that on the 22nd of October, Mars goes into debilitation. Probably in the in the world of politics, this means that uh, whoever of the parties associated himself with the with uh, with war or uh, industry of producing arms is about to get. This is a big maybe, however, but probably probably like eighty percent probability, right? To get weakened because Mars. Mm -hmm is becoming weaker while being in Mars. It's a question because the first degrees are still degrees of Mars, according to the ancient calculations. So I'm not putting 100% here. But uh, Mars goes into debilitation, people. Into debilitation. So Mars going into debilitation will mean that people ruled by Mars, like business managers, people in the security forces, police, army, and all those that are somehow related to energy type of business. Maybe this can involve the electric vehicles uh, industry. And and the mili military industrial complex as a whole. And yeah, so all those can have some uh, more troubles in the coming months. But this includes also the cryptocurrency, because in my ob observation, uh, well, the movements of Mars as the planet of energy so much... Uh, uh, used as a base of the cryptocurrency, especially crypto, right? Bitcoin, I mean, in first place. Right? They're so much related to the energy sources and uh, weakening Mars can be a sign of a weakening of the positions of the Bitcoin. So, of course, I'm not making you make your bets here, uh, but it's a higher probability to work this way than the other way around. So, uh, all the people ruled by Mars will have weaker positions, will go through a period when they're potentially not so great and successful as before. And uh, however, they can... Mars in uh, Cancer, this is a sign of uh, nation, sign of nationalism. So Mars going into Cancer will indicate much more anger, much more fight uh, based on national beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever this is right or not, the desire of people to de to defend their own understanding about their nation, uh, principle, values, and borders will increase, and uh, it will be, of course, more aggressive, as this is Mars. So uh, we can see that actually the world will be shaking with those things as because Mars will stay three months initially uh, in Cancer, then he will go back for some time in the previous sign is Gemini. And uh, then he will go again in the spring one more time in the sign of cancer. So this is like a long, long process that is starting. Mm, it's not nothing like that you should be fearing too much. Uh, I'll give you an example. The same cycle of Mars for all those people involved. Uh, it can show some similarity to the year 2009. When was the last time when Mars made uh, the same moments? This is actually the 
Well, if you think about it, it was actually the the consequences of the financial crisis because the financial crisis happened 2007, 2008. And if you think about it, Mars and Cancer lighter, probably one of the meanings it showed was the devastation by people on the property market, like in USA and other places. Our efforts needed to sustain families and uh, to establish base for property. However, Mars and Cancer uh, definitely indicates first signs that things on the property market will start to change. Definitely, it will start to change and something good can come out of it in the end. Okay? Like by better April, situation. basically. <laughs> by April, <laughs> April. April to June, somewhere there. But the, well, the first the signs... If we judge by out. the last time, prices really fell down of real estate. There was a correction. Yeah, and now the comet can make any correction that you can imagine. So... I think uh, it's very dynamic month. month, but Mars, Mars, Mars going there also. Uh, the, the ancients are having opinion, by the way, what they say will happen when Mars is in Cancer. So, of course, I remember it, but I will check exactly. Yeah, so they say that it will bring when Mars is in Cancer. Remember, this starts 22nd of, Can of uh, October. And it can be true for various uh, countries of the world, especially, I guess, those involved in military conflict. And uh, the ancients are saying simply the following. They say that uh, it causes the opposition of the leaders of the army, of the generals, the opposition of the generals of the army. So what opposition they mean? Maybe to towards the political leaders. Disagreement, danger of cops, danger of uh, plots, right? Uh, and mischief are saying this, uh, are saying the ancients. However, and I checked if this is true, if the specific uh, situation of Mars is happening in the sign of cancer, like in certain parts of the constellation, they, they write, and I checked if this will be so, and this will be so, not going into details, but one scary prediction that Mars being in these places that he will be now and later in the first half of the spring. So now from 22nd of October to 18th of January and later in April and to the first 10 days of May maybe, uh, what uh, the ancients are saying is danger of earthquakes. Danger of earthquakes, people. It's probably logical to have because cancer is uh, the sign of buildings and houses. Mars going there. But probably they have, uh, they, they're saying this uh, by the experience of observation. So, uh, then potentially greater danger of strong earthquakes can happen in different places of the world. Right now, however, I cannot say exactly when, of course, where. I have not, uh, or anyone, effectively enough. According to my knowledge, even though I hear some legends about that, uh, by, well, but I will not like disclose them right now, but uh, so far, Predicting the place of uh, and time of uh, earthquake has been very difficult. So, however, general prediction of big earthquakes. Mars in Cancer. Mm. By the way, I can say which are at least the countries associated with this sign. Uh, I can easily uh, relate the sign Cancer with two countries which are Armenia and Italy. But of course, there can be also others. There can be also like specific places in USA associated and all the rest of the continents. So Italy is cancer, according to ancient astrology. It makes sense because they love their big homemade cook, cooked meals, 
Mama is important there. Mama, Mama is uh, always the first place, right? Well, yeah. So that's why I'm saying this. It is potentially related. However, I'm not sure. So don't be afraid much. Uh, so, however, uh, aha, okay. And the ancients are saying uh, one specific place is also related to the sign of cancer. And this is what in ancient view was called Syria. This includes the modern country Syria, but also some of the adjacent uh, areas of Turkey, by the way, and Turkey, wow, they had big earthquakes not so far uh, ago. Uh, so watch out. And also I can say the north parts even of Israel, I guess. This was uh, what is called what was called Syria, the ancient times. Uh, the presence of Mars in those uh, in this sign, of course, shows greater disturbances of many kinds, including military and other aggressive activity. Uh, okay, Mars is going down. And as you can see, so far I have not even discussed the eclipse that happened. <laughs> <laughs> How long will its event influence be? You mean about Mars in Cancer? No, eclipse that just happened. So the eclipse, first of all, the eclipse does not look so dangerous or bad for the world uh, in the sense that it was basically visible in the very south parts of uh, Chile and Argentina and uh, Rapa Nui, which is the uh, original name of the Easter Island. So in those places, there can be greater problems, uh, including because it's an earth sign. It happened in Virgo, in the middle of Virgo, so they can have uh, potentially issues with agriculture, with the workforce, uh, with uh, the earth itself, like the injury of an earthquake. Uh, so also the ancients are saying Virgo is related to all birds because it has wings uh, in, the, in the sky. It's a heavenly woman that has the wings, which relates also to birds. So, uh, and so this is, uh, can be said. And in general, Virgo is relating to those topics, even for the world to some degree. We can see that uh, a strike started in USA, on the ports of USA. So people, the workforce on the ports uh, in the most of the country started a strike. So Virgo represents uh, the working class, people who are working. And obviously, this can uh, bring some discontent among people. Virgo is the sign of work and health. So in, in other uh, way, also we can say people should be like more careful health-wise. There is maybe danger of viruses. When, when we talk about the meaning of Virgo related to, to birds, uh, I remember the fear that uh, some virus can jump from birds to people. Maybe this is uh, one of the times that we should be more aware about that. Okay. This is one of the big fears, by the way, because it can be a virus that is dangerous. If it ever happens, it is. There is a long, long time standing warning from the scientific community about that. Oh, so we don't they're waiting know when, to when this can happen. <laughs> no, they're waiting when if, to... if it will be happening, maybe it's uh, like, you know, now. So. But because the, the eclipse was not seen, uh, actually, in most of the world, it's supposed to be not so influential, not so bad. The length of its influence is the greatest uh, influence is in the first hundred days. And there are various other ways of calculations, which are much more complex, which can put uh, the influence up to like two years and even more. Each minute, length of the eclipse uh, corresponds to one year of the effect. Uh, and so, but so far, I'm not so worried about it, even though it seems that it has some effects. 
So from all uh, so, you think is the the comet is the most important as a symbol. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, of course. She can be bright enough to be seen. She is visible. Uh, she already has been photographed in the southern hemisphere, which can be a sign for some disturbances in South America. The photograph was taken in Chile, the desert Atacama. It was a really beautiful picture. Uh, however, it can become uh, a sight to be held. Wonder, so to say. Uh, but it's about sign when it happens. I just, uh, yeah, I read some the writings of Cicero a little earlier. I'm writing Cicero. Uh, I'm uh, reading Cicero, sorry. So, uh, and uh, he was like just accidentally opening one page because I said to myself, I have not read this book so far enough. And uh, I'm opening on one page minutes before this uh, video and Cicero was writing about one comment <laughs> so, on this page that it happened uh, to be a bright comet right before the civil war between Octavian and Mark Antony. You know, the story of Cleopatra and uh, her suicide followed, etc. So there was a bright comet, big war. Wow. Again, right? Of course, of course. But we'll see. We'll see if this one will be like this. Also, he was, and by the way, he was also writing about the, mentioning many things, uh, because uh, this treatise that he write, write uh, like 2,000 years ago, that I'm relating to, is called On the Gods. He's writing about the nature of the gods on the ancient religion. And uh, this relates, of course, to planets, to the heavens, etc. That's why it's interesting to me. And uh, uh, he was commenting on the, this uh, phenomena of uh, sometimes people can have this optical illusion that they see two suns somewhere, right? And I remember, but I don't uh, remember exactly where this happened, that soon, like maybe in like two, three weeks ago, someone photographed this... Uh, Think two suns. Yeah, I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures yeah. of two suns in different ways. Yeah, but but Cicero was giving uh, Cicero was giving the the meaning of this. He said that when uh, once this happened in ancient Rome, uh, that a political activist that was very famous and he was like bright uh, and shining like the sun. He says uh, on the Republic uh, that the light of his life. Uh, has gone so the doubling of the sun the going of the light somewhere else interesting it was very interesting to read so anyway this was maybe off topic but actually interesting uh, remarks so and just to uh accent again uh, accentuate again that uh the ancients were considering the comets the appearing of comets a sign of wars uh, which is about to happen any moment potentially. We will, however, remember this is still not sure, right? We have to see it. We are just talking now. Okay, people? If, however, you see a bright comment around 12th of October, now you know what to think about. What this is uh, about to, to mean. We have to look at the constellation of Leo or Virgo near there. Uh, yes. And by the way, Leo and Virgo. Science related to countries in the South Europe, like Greece. The eclipse that happened in Virgo can be bad for uh, countries related to Virgo, like Greece. Sorry, Greece. The, the eclipses in the next months are happening in your sign. So obviously, Greece should be like much more careful what's going on, like in things like agriculture and politics and natural disasters. Now, the eclipse that happened in Virgo is a potential sign for some issues with uh, the fruits of trees and in general, all the results of agriculture. I guess most of all in South America, 
because there was uh, the visibility of the eclipse. And some issues not so great, not so strong in the rest of the world. All right, so this is according to um, the meanings of the eclipse. I'm sure more things can be said. However, it seems that this is like enough on the eclipse. Now I will go and uh, let's point out on some really positive things that are also about heaven, right? Uh, remember that the heaven is something, uh, having a wealth of events and things beyond any imagination. And there is also lying, all the positive possibilities. For example, on the 10th of October, Mercury will make conjunction with a spiritual star, the main star of uh, Virgo, actually. And this is a very good moment for some greater intellectual activity or any activity related to Mercury. Traveling, for example. Also, on the 14th of October, the Sun will make a trine to Jupiter. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a day when people were ruled by the sun, like having Leo rising in studio astrology, but Virgo in uh, Western astrology. Using tropical science, so this is uh, a day that people can reveal important truths in their lives and have in general much more luck and positive experience. This is true for everyone in some part, depending which, sun, which uh, house the sun is ruling in everyone's horoscope. So now you see that 10th October, 14th October, all some really good things. And, uh, well, hmm. however, on the 5th, 6th of October, the following days, Mercury will square Mars. Please don't sign contracts. And better not to travel, not to have important, uh, important negotiations. Probably not to begin... Uh, a uh, new job. On the 8th of October, Venus in trine with Mars, one perfect position for love activity. I read some of the legends about Venus and Mars, and uh, their daughter is called Harmonia in the ancient Greek legends. This harmonious relation between Venus and Mars promises harmony achieved through love, of course. Uh, so this can be like one of the luckiest days, many ways, in the love department. 13th of October, the sunny square with Mars is bad for politics for the world, and it's not good for new beginnings. And 19th of October is very special. Venus will make, uh, even though already she will be uh, in a sign that is not so good for her, Scorpio, but uh, most of the month until then, she is very strong. Uh, however, on, on this day, 19th of October, she makes a special aspect with a very special spiritual star. So I think this is a very good day for searching for knowledge and uh, spiritual practices. And so, there are also various, um, various other things, like one of the things that they say, the ancients about Jupiter and Taurus, and that I missed to mention, they mentioned actually in relation to Mars, is that Jupiter in Taurus, when it turns retrograde, can indicate plots against the king. So, okay, there will be various political manipulations very soon, around 8th of October, happening uh, in the world and in the places related to Taurus. 
By the way, one of the places related to Taurus that I missed to mention this time is Ukraine. The ancients are saying this territory is represented by Taurus. Today called Ukraine. Uh, and so, at the time of, it was called uh, Skitia, in English maybe Skysha. So, so there was various tribes and countries through the last thousands of years, two thousands of years there. Well, I guess this is mostly the information that I want to bring today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tripun, for this very in-depth, so many events are happening. I think it will be very interesting October and November. <laughs> it's very intense, definitely. <laughs> well, I'm reminding you that you can soften the times with having a webinar with me about love and marriage and uh, the perspectives about those in your own horoscopes. You uh, acquire much greater understanding, both for you and others. Yes, join us on November 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, and uh, putting a link below the first 10 days, it's a discounted price, whoever wants to join us or have a reading with Tripon on money, finances, or 60 minute general reading. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you everyone for uh, participating. This is incredible knowledge we receive about astrology. Just listening to this, you can learn astrology to this video. <laughs> And uh, may all you ble be blessed. Yeah, I'm just, I would just say that the day of the webinar was chosen astrologically, that the sun will be in the sign of Venus, the moon will be in the exaltation of Venus, Venus will be in the sign of Jupiter, and Jupiter will be in the sign of Venus, so they rule each other, so it's a very special moment, so... See you later that month and thank you for listening and uh, have a good time, everyone, actually. So because all those world events, uh, the ancients are specifically saying that the planets can harm you only with having uh, like exact degrees to your own chart. So you don't have to worry. If you want to know uh, that you can have any issues, good or bad, you can come for personal reading. But don't worry by the general predictions too much because uh, only very specific things happening to your own chart will show you having troubles. So uh, heads up and have a good time. See you again. Thank you.